Nobody ever said it was going to be easy to make this roster. Nobody said it was going to be easy to make this roster. So you, when you got a question why the Philadelphia Eagles are still bringing in defensive tackles, are still bringing in safeties, letting safeties go. If you haven't heard, Blake Countess has been released. We brought in another defensive tackle. A guy that, you know, well, a defensive lineman. I'm not sure if he was a tackle. A guy that was formerly with us before. It's not going to be easy to make this roster. You may have guaranteed positions. If you're above average player, you can make the roster as a linebacker. If you're slightly above average, you can make the roster as a cornerback. But every other, every other position is locked up. Every other position is locked up. Look at Mark and... Look at Mark and Michelle. He may make the he may make the roster, and that's solely because of the absence of um, the absence of Hollins and the emergence of himself in preseason and training camp. He's proved that he could play. Now, to make the roster as a running back, you have to be doing exceptionally well, because you will be behind Jordan Howard, and be behind Miles Sanders, and be behind Corey Clement and Darren Sproles. You got to go above and beyond to make the roster past those four running backs to actually see playing time. The Philadelphia Eagles are stacked, period. Across the board, stacked. We're healthier than a lot of people are giving us credit for. Um, you, you, you know, as talks intensify of Jadeveon Clowney and, and where he is and where he could be or where he could go, I can see us as a serious candidate for the position. I mean, anybody who wants to play with a defense with Fletcher Cox and be side by side with Fletcher Cox, they come play with Philly. You know, playing side by side with Fletcher Cox is like playing with Khalil Mack, Aaron Donald. It's just playing, it's playing with guys like that. You know what I'm saying? Gerald McCoy's. Fletcher Cox is an elite defensive tackle. So I can see Jadeveon Clowney wanting to make it easy on himself. You know, he played with J.J. Watt. He probably would want to make it easy on himself and play with Fletcher Cox as well. Um, what would we have to give up to do something like that? Who knows? We can go edge rusher for edge rusher. We can give up Josh Sweat. Um, they want a wide receiver. We got Nelson Aguilar. I think he's available with the uh, emergence of Ortega Whiteside. Listen, man, we stacked, and it, and 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 it's not even is. It's not even a point to brag about us being stacked. That's not the point I'm trying to make. The point I'm trying to make is that when you're stacked and your GM gets you stacked and you have a certain level of competition that's already built, um, it's, 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 it's no telling what could break out in practice. Andre Dillard. Andre Dillard has gotten to two emotional arguments from what I'm hearing two times in a row. Yesterday and the day before yesterday, he has been emotional at practice. Now, I hope there's not nothing going on in the background. I hope he's not one of these players that has potential but can't get a grasp of his emotions. You know what I mean? I hope he doesn't turn out to be like one of those guys, like um, like Josh Gordon or, you, you know, you know. there's been examples of guys with just mental and off the field issues. Now, I don't think he has any off the field issues. I hope it's just passion for the game, but there's no reason why you should be on the sidelines appearing to be crying when speaking to your coach. There's no room for that. Now, I hope, like I said, I hope it's passion for the game. You know what I mean? Two times in a row, you on the sideline, you gotta be talking to the coach. If From the outside looking in, just to be honest, it looks like you're getting bullied. Look like you're getting bullied. Pick yourself up, go out there and play football, young man. You were first round draft pick. You know what I mean? If you can't handle what's going on within the team, and, 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 from, and from what we all know, the Philadelphia Eagles is a very team oriented, very family, very united team. Imagine what you're going to hear and imagine what you're going to go through from the, the, the opposing pass rushers. It's a lot of trash talking in football. It's a lot of chippiness in football. Football is a contact sport. Let's not shy away from the mentality that we are warriors on the gridiron when we step on the field. Now, I'm hearing a lot of stuff about Amari Cooper, maybe more serious than the bruise. You know, one of our beloved, one of our beloved YouTube, YouTube sensations in the Cowboys, um, you know, arena. You know, I got eyes and ears everywhere, man. They saying that you called into the radio station. I'm not going to say your name yet. I want to know if you did it or not. They say you called in, used your YouTube name. And then you said you will from California, Will Jones. They said you called into the radio station and you was crying, basically. Oh, I hope Amari's not hurt. What are we going to do at wide receiver? If you really did that, shame on you. 
because you're one of the Cowboys content creators who don't have room to do that. You're one of the content creators who've talked so much that you've shortened your leash on almost being a human being when it comes to sports and showing emotion in anything. You're not allowed to do that. Cry on the radio. That's not for you. So let me know if it was you. Because I know you're going to watch. Because you watch everything I do. Every move. And those are the sirens on the way to Dallas.